The music industry is always changing, but it's changing at a pace we've never seen before. Now, is that good? Is that bad? Have we ever seen something like this happen before? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. But before we get into the first example, I just want to say I drop music videos like this all the time on YouTube. So if you enjoy, make sure to subscribe and leave a like. But yeah, let's get into the video. Now, it's hard to understand how the industry is changing right now unless you can compare it to something in the past. So I want to mention a couple examples of the music industry changing. Now, you can talk about how the instruments have changed. They've obviously evolved over time. You can talk about music television and like MTV becoming mainstream so more people can hear music but the first big change i really want to focus on is vinyls changing into cds now vinyls and cassettes were both good but they couldn't be used in as many scenarios as something like a cd could if you're going into your car you can just pop a cd in and play it right there and you can have a whole thing of cds but you can't really do that with vinyls now cassettes work but you also had less storage size and the sound quality was worse so music really shifted with cds you could put your cd into an xbox into your car into a cd reader literally anything your laptop and you can listen to the music there you can burn them let me show you how easy it is to burn a cd and play it in your car. The biggest jump after that was moving to something like iTunes where you could buy the song digitally so you don't own it physically but you can still listen to the song. Now that had its pros and cons. You can listen to it offline without a specific player but then they jumped from buying the mp3 to something like streaming services where you have like Apple Music, Spotify where you pay a monthly subscription maybe 10 11 12 dollars and you get to listen to any song you want that's where the biggest issue really came in it appealed to the accessibility and just the convenience and not as much the ownership for the listener so you could pay spotify 120 dollars listen to it all year and then once it runs out you have nothing to show for it alongside that it also pays the artist pretty minimally before you had to buy the cd and they'd get paid for that sale but now you don't really have sales it's more of like a certain amount of streams until you get a sale they get paid less basically this also brought concerns about sound quality because when it's posted online sometimes it's compressed you don't get the exact file to sound the way you want so when you compare that with market saturation because of how easy it is to just post a song to spotify you can see why it's more difficult for artists nowadays when they're not selling physical copies now speaking of posting your own song onto spotify i want to thank distrokid for help making this video possible with distrokid you can pay one small price per year and upload unlimited songs and you're also getting paid for all those songs so when i went online and i posted this song brand new like that iPhone 14 always come at last like your favorite sports team this shit ass bro I ain't gonna lie to you bro I was able to make the money back for my subscription originally so I basically made a profit from just making a fake song and streaming services are different it's not like YouTube or SoundCloud where you can just drag your file in and click upload and it just posts it you have to have a distributor in there in between and that's where DistroKid really helps with other distributors you have to pay every single time you post a song but with DistroKid as you can see right here you just select your plan like $1.92 a month and then you could go post a hundred songs if you want so yeah I strongly recommend it if you you're trying to post a song just for fun or if you want to be an actual artist and if you want to get it for even cheaper than they already have it you can click the link down below and use my code and you'll get a little discount and thanks again to distrokid let's get back into the video now there are some pros to the fact you can use streaming services like you can skip halfway through the song and see if you like it and just skip it after that if you don't but that also has cons because the artist doesn't really get paid you didn't even give their music a chance and you just kind of skip through it it's good for the consumer bad for the artist you can see now if you're a store and you sell records how are you even in business? People are going to pay for Spotify and it's just going to run you out of business. The other side of that argument though is that any artist, like I just explained earlier, any artist can just log on and post their music. So you don't have to get signed to a record label. You don't have to know someone that can print CDs for you. And when you combine that with something like TikTok or YouTube Shorts, it's easier than ever to blow up. But like we talked about, that also comes with some cost, especially the attention span. So it just goes to show how much streaming changed music. But the newest, biggest change I want to talk about in this video is AI. Now, believe it or not, some of your favorite artists, I believe Drake has done it recently, have used AI in their music and you probably haven't even noticed. Like, watch this. I just pulled up Suno AI. I think I have an old video of me using this. But look at this. People generated this. <laughs> So off the bat, that seems really good. And that's just what we have in the public. Imagine what the record labels have behind the scenes that we don't get to use. So say I want to make a song and post it on DistroKid, for example. Watch how quick this is. Make a song about the YouTuber It's Mason. Now I'll just copy and paste a couple lines that I like. So now obviously you can tell this is kind of written by a robot. Not as good as you would if you were to write it by hand. But it's only getting better. So let's copy and paste the line that we like. Like right here, the chorus. And go over to Suno. Click here. Paste it. Create. I was actually editing this video and I remembered when you're writing a song, usually ChatGPT doesn't do very well. So you can use something like Text Effects, which is made by Lupe Fiasco and Google. You can go to something like Simile. These are all different tools. I typed in Rapper. I could click Run right down below. You can see it generating. Temperature of 0.7. I don't even know what that means, but 
and you can see right here a couple seconds later it comes up with a rapper's like a painter using words to paint a picture using rhythm and flow to create a masterpiece obviously that's a little bit of a stretch but you can use that as inspiration when you're writing your song so yeah back to the video now you can see right here it's generating two versions for me so if you don't like one you can pick the other and boom under a minute it generated this for me now obviously that's not very good that's what we have that hasn't been updated in a while that's not what the record labels have and there is no deep faking of any vocals at all keep that in mind but when you do look at the people that have trained voice models that sound really good it's really hard to tell what is ai but if you have a good setup and you can train a voice model you can really make undetectable ai music now the crazy part is people are automating that whole process to where they just paste in the chat gpt lyrics they have a better prompt than i had but then they just take the output and automatically post it to DistroKid and they just get the money back and they're not doing anything. Now for the music industry, that's obviously not a very good thing, but not all changes are good and this is a change that we are seeing in the industry as we speak. Take a look at something like this. Someone made this in their bedroom. It's an old Eminem AI voice and they just generated the song. The spikes on this baseball bat, clock it back, then I hit a home run. And they're running home screaming while I'm chasing them down the street for no reason except to leave them in a the heap of their own broken bones bleeding. And I'm still cold and it's no season when it's 20. Like that rhyme scheme is pretty good and it doesn't sound terrible on the new eminem album he used a lot of ai that's kind of what inspired me to make this video and it doesn't sound too much better than that and yeah it's pretty crazy i know a lot of you guys won't agree with the idea of using ai in music let me know down below if you do support the idea of it i think it'll open some new creative outlets it's the same as someone being able to have like fl studio in their room like originally people had to go to the studio to get that but now people can do it on their computer a lot of people didn't like the fact that it became digital like fake drums but then we adapted to it and just made music better using that so do you guys think we're going to use ai to make music better or do you think it's just gonna make us lazy? So that's what I wanna talk about in this video. Like I said, leave your thoughts below because this is a very deep subject. There's not a right or wrong answer to using AI. Like I said, we saw Eminem using it to his advantage, but it can also cause people to be lazy like we talked about. And if you wanna try to make your own music, I'll leave the links below. I'll leave DistroKid down below. Something I didn't mention is if you're a student, you get half off. So if you're posting music consistently, you'll be making a profit. So if you're interested in posting music, make sure to use that. But thank you for watching. If you want more music content, make sure to subscribe, leave a like if you enjoyed it, leave a dislike if you didn't. And I'm I'm gonna roll some skate clips. Let me know if I should put more skate clips in my videos. Thank you for watching. Peace out. The grind is back. Hopefully, Monday.